Hi everyone, welcome to another QGIS tutorial. Today we're going to cover how to create and label contour lines in QGIS. Um, before we get started, just want to let you know that I'm going to be posting some more things related to GIS um, and kind of graphic design and stuff on the Open Source Options Facebook page and Instagram. So if you want to see those, go ahead and follow along. It's just Open Source Options on Facebook and Open Source OPT, uh, all one word, on Instagram. Um, so feel free if you want to. Also, I'm going to post more stuff on the community page on the YouTube channel. So if you're interested in getting notifications about the posts that go up on the community page, just make sure to turn your, your YouTube notifications on and notif notifications on for this channel. Don't feel obligated. I don't care if you don't do it, but if you want to see them, go ahead. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do here is I need some elevation data to make contour lines. And to do that, I'm going to add in a DEM. And I'm going to use the same DEM that we downloaded a few videos ago. And uh, if... I'm just going to click OK there. If you want to get that same DEM, this same DEM here, um, just go back and check the how to download a DEM video, and you can get this exact DEM. OK, so now we've got this DEM added. Creating contours is actually really simple in QGIS. We're just going to go into raster and extraction here and contour. And it's going to bring up a dialog box here for us. Um, it's going to, we're going to have our input layer, which is our DEM. We want band number one, our interval. I'm going to make this 20. And you might be wondering what these units are. They're going to be the unit elevations in your DEM. Okay, and so there's not going to be something that specifies that um, necessarily. QG, there's not going to be something that specifies that that QGIS can read. But it may be that it may be there in um, your your metadata. Okay, this is the attribute name. It's going to be the attribute table. So it's going to create a shape file, um, so a vectorized shape file, and this is going to be the name of each contour is going to be elev, which is fine. Here's the offset from zero. So for example, if I change this to five, um, I'd have a contour line. At 5, 25, 5, 25, 45, 65. If it was 10, it would be at 10, 30, 50, 70, and so on. I'm going to leave it at 0 so it goes 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay, and I'm going to save this to a temporary file. You can put in a file name here if you would like to. So let's go ahead and click Run. Okay, looks like we're done. There we go. We have some contour lines. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn off my NED. Um, you can see those contour lines there. Let's go ahead and open up the attribute table so we can see what we have there. And you can see we have an ID for each one, and then we have the elevation of each one. And you can see these are in 20 meter increments, just like we hope that, just like we said they should be, um, and they're organized by ID not by um, the, sorry, not by the contour, not by the elevation. I'm just going to go in and change the symbology. I'm going to make this all black so it's a little easier to see. Okay. And then I'm just going to scroll in so we can see what's going on. All right, so there we go. We have our contour lines. Now, let's say I want to label these. Well, that's pretty easy to do. Let's go into our contours. All we have to do is turn our labels on. So we go to labels, change no labels to single labels, and label with our elevation. Click OK. Take a second to load this up. And you can see, there we go, we have all these contour line labels. Now that's getting a little messy, and they don't, we can't tell exactly which line they're on. So let's go make some adjustments in here. So let's go into our contours. 
and our allowed position, we want them on the line, not above the line. And we can make a little buffer. So if we make a buffer around this, it's going to um, overlap the line so we can't see exactly. So it'll cover up the line. I'm going to read that text a lot better. So I'm going to click OK here, and I'll show you what that looks like. So now you can see these are placed directly on the line. And they have a buffer around them so the line doesn't go behind them. So you can see that. Okay. Now, this is not generally how we do contour lines, though. I mean, we have our contour lines, but generally what you see on a lot of topographic maps is you see a, a thicker contour line or a bolded contour line you know, every so often, and those are the ones that are labeled, and then you can assume um, or you can get the, the value of each contour line in between those bold ones. So what if we want to do that and make those index, those index contours? We can do that with QGIS too. So we're going to get into how to do that right now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do for index contours is to identify the contours we want to be the indexes. So let's go to our attribute table and open up the attribute table. We can see here I have an elevation for each one of these. For me, I want to make um, an index contour every 100 meters. So I want like this 1800 uh, to be an index contour and then 1900, 2000. So I'm going to do a field calculator command and create a new column. And I'm going to make this column name. I'm going to create a new field. So make sure create new field is checked here. I'm going to give it the name index. And then I'm going to enter an expression. I'm going to say if the elevation this is the modulo operator. This gives you a remainder. So it's like dividing, but you only get the remainder. So if I do... I want the remainder of 100, when I divide by 100, I want the remainder to equal, oops, sorry, equal zero. And if that's the case, I want a value of one. If it's not the case, I want a value of null. Okay. So for example, with this modulo operator, if my elevation was, let's say, um, 2020, this would return 20. If it was 2060, it would return 60. If it was 2000, it would return 0. Okay. Um, so if that equals 0, I want to give it a value of 1 for the index contour. Otherwise, I want to give it a value of null. Let's go ahead and click OK. Okay, so you can see I have my index contours here. Let's go ahead and sort by elevation. So I have a few line segments that are 1,700 here, 1,800 here. Good deal. So you can see that those have done that correctly. Okay. Now I'm going to go up here. So when I do that, it starts an editing session. I'm going to click Save Edit right here. And then I'm going to stop editing. Okay. Oops, sorry. I start editing. We'll turn that off. No. Let's just go ahead and close that and let's open our attribute table again. Make sure. Show all features. Show all features. I don't know what I did here, guys. Hold on just a second. I'll figure this out. Um, so I just need to go back to table view here. That's that's the problem. So now we're back at table view. There we go. We're not editing anymore. Okay, we're clear. So first, uh, let's go ahead and change our symbology here. So let's open up our symbology. We can go to properties. We can double click or right click and go to properties. Let's go to symbology. Uh, and then we're going to do categorize symbols. We're going to select column is going to be index. We're going to classify it. We're going to change the value for all symbols. We're going to make it a simple line, color black, say OK. Now we're going to come in here, all of the values, double click that one, 
let's make the color black okay and then let's make this one color black and we're gonna make the stroke width triple the other one and click OK and there you go now you can see how they have those index contours that are bolded so we have one more thing we need to do here we still have every contour labeled um, so we have all those whether or not um, they are index contours labeled and we just want to label those index contours. So how can we do that? Well, let's go back to the attribute table. And we just need to make a new column, another calculation. It's going to be called label. So let's go back to our um, field calculator and let's make a new column named label. And this will just be index multiplied by elevation and so this should give us either null or the value uh, of the index contour so where it's not an index contour we'll get a value of null which won't get displayed as a label and where it is an index contour we'll get a value of that index contour that will show up as a label so let's go ahead and click OK all right, and there you see we have that. So we're going to save our edits, and I'm going to turn off editing. There we go. I think I clicked multi-edit last time. Okay, editing turned off, so I did that right. And now let's go back to our contours and adjust the labels. So if I double-click on it, bring up the properties, go to my labels, change the label column to label click OK and now I have only my index contour label as you can see there all right so I'm just going to do a little bit of adjustment to clean this up a little make it look nice uh, and we're going to be done and the thing I want to do is I just want to make those uh, the non index contours I want to make them not quite so visible and uh, maybe I'm just gonna make this like a slightly transparent here down like that and say okay and say okay and that makes those index contours pop just a little more um, you can also adjust the label size here if you want to make these uh, go to our text we can bump this up to like 11 uh, we don't have the option to make oh we can make it bold here it's a little bigger and bolder and say okay and there you have those index contours popping out a little more with with the labels anyway that's how you can use QGIS to create labels. Um, I hope this has answered any questions you guys may have, and I hope it's helpful. If you have any requests for videos, um, please let me know. I'm happy to consider those. I do try to get to all the requests. Um, I'm pretty busy right now, and so I don't have a lot of time to get to all the requests, but I do try. I do take notes of them, um, and hopefully eventually I can get to all the requests you guys have. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and let me know if you have any questions.